Hello to you newcomers and welcome back subscribers. This is Big Baby Props and I'm the Big Baby. I've had a request to show you guys how I set up my Phase 2 Clone Trooper helmet to be 3D printed. So in this video that's what we're going to cover. So here I've got a brand new Phase 2 Clone Trooper helmet to slice and set up for printing. Now for this helmet we'll actually be able to print the whole thing without having to cut it up. But I know some of you guys don't have printers with as large of a print bed as I do. So we're going to slice it up first and print it that way, and then after that we'll print the whole thing. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is kind of level it out a bit. You can see this neckline is pointed downward. We want that to be horizontal so that it gives us a nice point of reference for slicing later on. So I have the helmet in Simplify 3D. This is a paid-for software, but uh, there are free alternatives like Cura is a very popular one. So what we're going to do is just rotate it, uh, not that way, not that way. We're going to rotate it a few degrees this way until it looks pretty well flat. And I think that's good with me. So we'll go to file, uh, export, sorry not the profile, export models, and we'll export it as a binary STL. Okay, in order to start slicing it, we want to open up a free program called Mesh Mixer. This is what I use to slice all of my files to cut them up into smaller pieces that'll fit better on the print bed. So let's import our file, and here it is. Now, the way I generally like to cut my files is I'll cut the dome, that'll be one piece, then I will cut the face, usually around here, and then I'll print the back by itself. I find that having the fewest amount of pieces possible really helps later on when you're trying to fill in the seams between pieces. You want the seams to be as, you know, little of an issue as possible. That's going to save you a lot of time sanding and a lot of time filling. So in order to slice this helmet, we'll go to Edit and then plain cut and you can see how having a model that is completely flat to some of the major features helps a lot here so we're going to cut the dome first now the placement of the cut is important you could place it in the middle of this rim here which I think is what I'll do you could place it at the top. You could try and get none of this rim at all and just print the dome exactly. Another good option. I've printed several helmets like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend printing underneath the little rim here because what that's going to leave you with is a very thin... Well, let's just do it real quick. I'll show you guys what I mean. and We'll flip that to discard the rest of that. So what you'll be left with is a very thin brow here. And this will be very susceptible to breaking as you're assembling the helmet before you've glued it all together. And we won't definitely want to avoid that. So I generally cut it somewhere higher. Now the reason that I think I'm going to print in the middle of the rim is that printing at the top of the rim can be a little bit tricky for aligning purposes. Uh, you don't really have a lot of a good point of reference on how to make everything flush. Uh, whereas cutting in the middle of the rim, I can make sure that the rim is completely flush all around the helmet. And when it is, I'll know that it's perfectly aligned. So when you're ready to cut, Go ahead and change this to keep both because we don't want to delete the bottom half of the helmet. We'll hit accept and it looks like nothing happened but I assure you it did. You have to hit the separate shells button. Basically what it did was it created a slice through of basically zero thickness. It has cut your model but it doesn't actually you know show very well. So we'll hit the separate shells and you can see that it's now given us 
two pieces to work with. So now we'll need to do the same thing for the bottom half. If you need to rotate the cut like I do here, select this little curved rectangle. And here's a tip, if you drag it out to this little uh, wheel, it will snap to five degree increments. So the best I like to do is 90 degrees. And if you, if you remember earlier, I talked about picking good places for seams, places that you can fill easily and hide, and things that go with the natural geometry of the object. So I'm going to try and align it up with this piece here. Now it's already got kind of a crease to it, so that should be easy to hide. So here we go, now we've got three pieces all ready to be printed. And these will fit on a much smaller print bed. So now we can export these. Okay, now that we've got all the pieces exported, we can open them in Simplify 3D and start slicing them. Let me go over a few of my print settings for you guys just so that you can compare it with yours if you're using a different slicer or if you're using Simplify 3D. It's just the default Creality CR10 with a few updates. So I'm running 10% infill because infill is not really a, that big of a deal. I usually have a little bit of infill just so that it supports some of the, uh, the overhangs on top, but I wouldn't go any more than 10. So layer, I have 0.3 millimeter layer thickness. That is the fast configuration. Uh, you can go a medium or high. This will change that layer height to be smaller and smaller. And so you have fewer and fewer, I mean, sorry, you have more and more print lines, which makes the object look and feel smoother. I go for the fast approach because you're going to have to sand the 3D print anyway, so I usually like it to print faster, and then I will smooth it out in post-processing. If I changed it to medium, the print would probably take 120 hours compared to 80, so I'll take uh, two hours of you know elbow grease compared to another 40 hours of print time. So let's start with the top. Now the top is pretty easy. It doesn't require a lot as far as supports go. It's kind of up to you to know the limitations of your printer, how well it can manage the overhang that is going to happen here. We'll just go over here to the supports and let's change it to 70 degrees for the max overhang angle. Anything that hangs over 70 degrees will generate a support. So we'll hit this and we can see that it's added a bunch of supports in the middle here as well as some around the ring. Typically I'm more conservative with the amount of supports that I add onto an object simply because it increases the print time quite a bit. Now if we change this to 75 degrees that will thin out a lot of that and it will make the printing go by faster. It might cause some problems for us as far as some stringing and you know it won't look good on the inside. On the outside I usually find that it holds up pretty well. So I, I feel comfortable setting it at 75 degrees because we can I usually use a heat gun on any stringed out imperfections on the inside and just sort of flatten them down with my hand. Meanwhile the top of the helmet, the one the part that you're actually going to see looks pretty good. So I feel comfortable with 75. So we'll save this off and move on to the next piece. Okay, for the front pieces, I've done it a few different ways. I've done it as shown here with the, you know, face in a normal position. I've done it with the face upside down so that you get this perfect connection between the plate and the, the body. And I've done it where it's flat like this. And I found that the best one is the one we started at. 
not that one. There's a couple reasons for this. One, if it's upside down, then some of the details are kind of backwards. You get a very detailed like bottom here, but maybe the teeth here aren't very what aren't very good or you know maybe some other important details like the the visor here maybe it looks a little difficult or it looks a little bad because it's being held up with supports and anything that's held up with supports isn't going to look as clean as something that isn't i kind of pick my poison i orient it like this add supports to the underneath here because obviously it's hanging in midair and I'm okay with the underneath looking a bit rougher because I want the rest of the face to be as clean as possible. So let's add some supports. Let's go. When I have an, when I have an overhanging part like this, I usually give it a little bit more supports than usual. Like I can see that it didn't generate supports right here, so I might add some myself just to keep it uniform. So this is how I usually make my faces. It's got some supports that go all the way up here. Not ideal, but you know, you just gotta live with it sometimes. So let's save this off. Let's see how much it, how long it'll take. Let's see, our other one took 28 hours. And this one's clocking in about 27. So we're at a little bit more than 50 hours so far. And we've got one part left. Now the back is similar to the front, whereas there's a few different ways I've tried it. But again, I found that the uh, normal orientation works the best as far as usually the least amount of supports and quickest print time, as well as the detail that gets priority. Here, we'll have some supports underneath here, and it'll look a little bit rougher under here since it's propped up by supports, but this is the underneath. It won't get as much uh, attention as some of the other parts. So let's just add some supports here. Uh, I think we can go around 70. Let's see, it added it to the bottom, some along the, the back there. Let's see how long this will take, and then we'll flip it and compare. Okay, this will take 24 hours, and it'll look pretty good. It doesn't have a lot of supports underneath here, which is great. Let's exit and do this the other way. Let's clear those supports. Let's add them at, ooh, let's try 70 because that was a lot of supports. Yeah, it still wants to add all of these supports. And I already know this is going to take a lot longer than the last one. But let's see how much. So if the other one was 24, I believe. And this one's 37. So it's kind of a no-brainer which to choose. One more thing to keep in mind is it's really easy to add any little pieces that you might have to these big prints like this. So I'm going to add my little uh, aerators and the little ear pieces to the back piece just so that I don't forget about them. We'll copy this so we have R2. Uh, I think I'm gonna move it so they are on the inside there so that the printer doesn't have to travel as far. Okay, let's print this and get it on our way. Okay, so those pieces only added uh, another hour or two. Not a big deal. We have got our back and extras for 26 hours. The front was 27 and the top was 28. So that's uh, 70, 81 hours total. Not too bad for a full helmet. So now that we've got our split helmet, let's try printing the helmet all in one. So I'm just gonna bring this in. I'm gonna try and orient it best from the get-go. So let's rotate it a little bit. 
there. I think that'll fit better. You don't want it too close to the edges in case the printer, you know, I've had it where a wire will block a little bit of the printer so it can't reach all the way out to its ends. You definitely don't want that because that will ruin your print. So I try and keep it as centered as possible. So let's add our supports. With this, I think I'm going to go with 70. And I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. And you will see why in a bit. So it looks pretty similar to the way we did our helmet when it was split up. You, know, you got supports in here, underneath. It's got some around the dome. And of course, those around the bottom. Now, in our dome, when it was split out, we added the supports up in here, and it wasn't too big of a deal. You know, we wanted that support just to give it a really nice uh, bottom so we don't have to fix it as much. But here, these supports, they are going to go all the way up to the top of the helmet. That is a lot of plastic, and that alone is probably uh, 20 hours of printing. That's going to use up a lot of time and a lot of filament. So we want to do our best to avoid using these. Now again, this goes back to what you think your printer is capable of handling. I know that my printer can do it. The, the inside looks a bit rough, but the outside looks you know, perfectly normal. So I feel comfortable removing all of these supports on the inside. Let's compare how long it would take to print the helmet with these supports, and then again without them. We'll see if my prediction was close. Okay, that is 107 hours compared to the 81 that we had when it was split out. You can tell that adds, it, I was pretty close, it added 26, yeah, about 26 hours to our total print time. So let's remove these on the inside and then check it again. Okay, that was a lot of clicking, but here we go. I think it was 107 that we have to compare it to. Oh my gosh, that saves so much time. It is actually less than if you were to split it all out. That's amazing. And look at that, we've got some supports on the inside, as well as the outside and bottom, of course. But that's pretty great time. Almost 80 hours for a full helmet. I usually find that they average around 100, so this is great. Now obviously the benefit of printing it in one piece, you don't have to do any sanding and, I'm sorry, you don't have to do any gluing. <laughs> You're still going to have to do a lot of sanding and smoothing, but you don't have to worry about aligning the pieces and making sure that they stick together, which is a, which is a big benefit. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something about printing phase two clone trooper helmets. Basically this applies to helmets of all kinds. You know, you might be able to print it all at once if the helmet is shaped for it. Otherwise, you'll probably have to split it up, but that's okay too. If you guys have any specific questions about my process, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. So be sure and leave them. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you again next time.